Mr. Hugh Grant is here tonight. There he is. Look at you. Now, Hugh. Look at can, you. Look at you. Now, can I? Oh, you. You little chaffinch. Now, look, you. I got. I want you to be honest in this. Give me the honest answer. When you wake up in the morning and you see your schedule and it says that at the end of the day you've got to do an American talk show on Zoom, honestly, honestly, what goes through your head? Are you like, oh, why did I agree to do this? Uh, do you know what, James? <laughs> I am so lucky to do the job I do. And um, I, f I, I feel nothing but gratitude for any attention I get. I think that's the correct answer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a nightmare. I mean, I was so <laughs> <very popular. laughs> my, my children have never been asleep in their eight years of existence. So, you know, that's all happening upstairs. My wife is committing suicide downstairs. <laughs> I'm, I'm and you. you're in the middle doing a talk show on Zoom. What c couldn't be better? Yeah. Is your life now, it must be filled with games and cartoons and kids' music. What is Hugh Grant's tolerance for Baby Shark ringing out around the house? Um, it's about 43 seconds. <laughs> and can I, I have a little flat around the corner. I say, I've really got to go and learn some lines now. <laughs> but uh, actually, it's all rather a touching story. It's a bit like there's a, there's a, there is a, there's a kid's story I read them called Mr. Just So, which is about a, a rabbit who lives in a burrow and he, he's sort of elderly, grumpy rabbit who likes everything in its perfect place and everything's just lovely. And that's how he likes his life. And then one day he meets some duck, ducklings that have been uh, separated from their mother and he doesn't know what to do with them, so he takes them into his burrow and over the next few days, they create complete chaos and turn everything upside down, and it's a nightmare for Mr. Just So. But then their mother turns up, and he gives them back, and when they've left, he's really sad. And I, I can't read this story without crying, because this is the story of my life. I was Mr. Just So. I had a perfect existence of golf and... Well, that's it, really, golf. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then suddenly, bang, five children, and... Uh, and actually, it's really nice. I can't remember, have you got children now? I do, I have three children, and I think they're sort of minus, minus three, six and ten. So I think some of them are a similar age to yours, but I know exactly what you mean. It's, Let's get them together. I would love nothing more, I really wouldn't. That would be a joy for me. Um, now, yeah. Hugh, you've had such a long, you had such a brilliant career, and, and I never knew this, but I was really about you said that you you learnt acting techniques from books that you would read. Is that true? Can you remember what, the name, what, what, what books were they and were they genuinely helpful? Well, I was very insecure. I, didn't, I never really meant to be an actor, I, but I, it's a long story, but I ended up, for some reason, in the theatre in Nottingham, in a, you know, in, a, in a bunch of plays and a whole season. And everyone else had been to RADA or something, and I hadn't, and I was very insecure, so I thought, I'd better, you know, read up on how you act. So I bought some books. There was one called uh, Actor in the Movement, or Actor in Movement or something, and one was another one for voice, and they gave you exercises. And I used to go into this park in Nottingham and, uh, and pathetically try and do these exercises. I can remember one of them said, you must run backwards over space, feeling the air behind you while saying, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I remember doing that. I did that about half a dozen times before I realised there was some local Nottingham kids watching me saying, that wanker's doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one you've probably done yourself, you know, um, was all about how to relax your face, prepare your face for, for acting, and, you know, you had to get the facial muscles going by doing exercises where they said... So, scratchy nut. And another one was wide and happy. <laughs> scrunchy nuts, wide and happy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wide and happy, scrunchy nut. Oh, and that's it. That's Very it good. now. That's it. Me. That's for me now. <laughs> that is actually the most training I've ever had as an actor. <laughs> um, now, Hugh, there was a point in your career. Uh, where you had fired your agent, is this true, and you would pretend to be your own representative. Is that true? How did that work? 
Well, I, fire is a strong word. Okay. I just thought that I would. Uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd. Um, I was never very good at taking advice. I never have been very good at taking advice or any of that stuff. So I thought I, I, this is nonsense, and it's. I, I could save a fortune if I just was my own agent. So I invented a man called James Howe Ely, <laughs> who, who was my rep, but he was secretly me. And people would email, you know, James and say, could you get this script to Hugh? And I would type back, yes, of course, I, I try and get it to him as fast as possible, you know, James. And it worked. It worked pretty well for a year or two. And I saved a fortune. But then, you know, <laughs> there were nights when I was, I'd had too much to drink. And I'd say, yes, I'd get Hugh the script and I'd sign off Hugh. And, and, and the whole rabbit started to come out of the, out of the bag. And what another time was they, this? Oh, they, when was this oh, in I, your career? I, well, I was I'd sort of more or less... I'd sort of had enough of acting for a bit at that point. Right. I was doing, I was doing lots of politics instead. But uh, anyway, now I'm back and I, I, I have a lovely agent. And, uh, but have you, because you say you've fallen out of love with acting, did you, do you feel, because I feel like your career now is as great as it's ever been. I think your choices are brilliant. I think your performances are great. Are you enjoying it as much as we are? You're very nice to say all that. And it is odd for me because... Uh, I, I, I almost do enjoy acting now. It's been such a relief to not have to be, uh, you know, charming leading man. Uh, I gave that my best shot. And, you know, some of those films I did like that are lovely and I love them for being popular. And I'm grateful for them. Grateful again, note. Uh, but it has been a lovely relief now that I'm allowed to be, you know, twisted, ugly, uh, weird. Uh, misshapen. Now, we have to congratulate you on The Undoing, which is a brilliant show, and you are absolutely brilliant in it. I think what you're doing in that show is so incredible, but uh, is, I heard, th this horrified me, that you would read reactions on Twitter as episodes aired, which I would recommend nobody to ever do. Were you happy with what you were reading? You know, unlike a film, I'm not accustomed to doing television, and uh, one of the things about doing TV now, the last time I did it, it must have been in the 80s, apart from a very English scandal, was that, you know, you can see how people are reacting in real time, and I, that's just too fascinating to ignore. What's weird is that I scroll through anything positive or nice said about me or the show, and I go straight to the bad things. And of course. Dwell on that. Yeah. I mean, and there was so much, there's so much talk. There is a, a massive talk, right, and rightly so, I think, about you getting an Emmy nomination for this performance, which I think you absolutely richly deserve. Do you, do you get excited for that sort of acclaim and acknowledgement? Uh, well, you, I think you have to... The, the correct, correct answer here is, oh, well, not really. I was just honoured to be doing the project and to work with such wonderful people. <laughs> That's the correct answer, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you love it. You love it, and... Uh, you, I think the... Um, I remember in the theatre, in Notting back in Nottingham Playhouse, we were told when we did the curtain call at the end that the face to make was surprised but delighted. <laughs> so you'd be uh, taking, taking your bow, and you'd be going, oh, 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 oh. well, I'm delighted, but so surprised to clap her. <laughs> that is the face I'm trying to make now. Right. <laughs> and make it well you do.